from my perspective uh, as an entomologist, the more diversity you have, the, the better your biological control is going to work. Uh, it is notable in this orchard that there is non-detectable woolly aphid, just for starters, and I don't have a mite problem. The effect on the other insects is difficult to gauge because the plots are small. Then there are a whole lot of, well, they're primary, they're not secondary effects, one of which is just basically improving soils over, over time. If you look at the, the results to date, uh, for example, things like soil organic matter and stable carbons have increased each year, and I think that's really important. And a piece of work that we do to do on soils includes soil moisture in terms of uh, there's this perennial argument about cover crops use water. Cover crops in this situation are important enough to the farm management they actually purposefully water them. The other one is water ingress and, and water holding capacity of soils with, with increased carbons in them. We're going to have to look at that so we would be doing water ingress studies on these soils after four years of, of cover cropping versus the farm standard. When, when one starts dealing with mulch, there's 370 bales per hectare of straw mulch being put out. In fact, on this entire farm, it's, it's, it's farm policy. But one starts worrying about importing organic material out of the swipe plant in here, and it's expensive. So, Hendrik Poel, the, the farm manager, had some experience of growing medics under trees. He was very happy with it. It had a whole lot of benefits to it, including nitrogen. So, we had a go. We can, we can have a look at it. It's been successful. Uh, we still have some issues with weeds actually invading or oh, the medics not being competitive enough uh, or the subterranean clovers and we've got a, a another clover species growing on the bunkies but the motivation is to have an organic mulch basically a, a, a green organic mulch that will die off in in summer and then come back in come back in winter and exclude weeds I think one thing this has illustrated is, is our continual battle with keeping weeds under control or plants out of areas that we don't want them necessarily to grow. Yeah, I'm a biased observer. No, I didn't see any negative. That's a real researcher comment, isn't it? And I have asked. Both managers, people have come and looked. No, I can't see any negative effects, but then it would be very difficult to measure them on, on this trial design. I think it's something to keep in mind, very definitely. But also remember, a lot of the biological action with cover crops, be they under the tree or in the row, is after harvest and before bloom. So management, uh, in situ management of, of cover crops is uh, yeah, a developing art, I think. Number one, it's almost site specific. Uh, what, what happens here doesn't necessarily happen in, in Kaurabokefeld. So yes, we mowed originally. We've started rolling cover crops with a crimp roller that I think is more successful mow and blow, taking material out of your row and getting it on your bunkie, we need to develop. Mowing it with a flail mower doesn't work. It breaks it up too much. We'd have to use a scythe or, or some other method. Managing cover crops on your bunkie, under your tree, is also we are experimenting with, with various uh, bits and pieces and funny enough the one that looks the best again is a roller. That allows you to manipulate your cover crop without terminating it and you can also manipulate your cover crop before it seeds.
and that ties into integrating weed management into, into cover crops. Mm -hmm.